You know, when you take a look at the internet and how it's changed in the last few decades, going from something that was bulletin boards and news groups primarily, into what we have today, which is Web 2.0 and social media sites everywhere. Our technology is integrated in such a way that people can comment wherever they are from any device they may own. If you're tweeting or on Facebook or if you're uploading YouTube videos, it seems like everybody wants to talk to everybody else. And the interesting thing about that is you're going to run across people that you'd never meet in real life. The sorts of people you wouldn't come across at the grocery store or when you're out shopping for a video game or a movie, uh, picking up wine. It doesn't really matter where you're going or what you're doing. These people would be segregated. They'd be in their mother's basements or in their trailer park or in their apartment, weeping silently to themselves because they lack the ability to interact socially with anyone. Well, here comes the internet. Here comes all these social media sites. Here comes their ability to not actually have to leave the house but still be able to interact with people. And boy, that is a carrot that's being dangled in front of their face they just can't help but want to go after. In fact, I bet if you were to take any attribute, any characteristic you could think of, and put them together randomly, you could find somebody on the internet who matches that to a T. And so that gave me an idea, something I wanted to play around with. Now, it's nothing extraordinary. It's not uh, some grandiose new series. It's just a fun little project. If it's successful, if you like this video, this is going to just be a, a test run, uh, a proof of concept video. If you like it, we can move on from there and actually try to see how it works. So the basic premise of this, as you can see from this amazing, amazing graphic that I've made, now you need to understand that's a lot of talent and skill that went into that. I mean, that's not novice stuff. That took me like five minutes. That was tough. If I had real skill, I probably would have made some cool little flash animation or eh, something neat to put there, but God, I am fucking horrible with technology and I'm lazy, and when you put those two things together, you get shitty still images, like this one. So the idea is this. Case in point, internet slot machine. We take random characteristics, put them together, and see if we can find somebody that matches them. So for this test run, for this proof of concept video, like I was saying, I'm going to take, I don't know, let's see. Well, let's go with a tried and true, autism. Uh, let's throw in some furry, because everybody loves furrydom. And uh, uh, brony. So there we go. Brony, furry, autism. If you put those in that slot machine, if you, you crank back onto that fucking handle, what are we going to find? Who's going to fit that description? I'll show you what true commentating really is. Well, fuck me, that was easy. Huh, that, uh, that opening's making me feel inadequate. Like, uh, my own video's lacking something. The oomph factor. Uh, some well-polished piece. I, I, I don't know if I can talk about this individual if I don't have an opening of that caliber. Let me, uh, let me, let me try this. Let me, let me try this. Here comes the thunder, huh? Well, you know what? I like it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold on to that gem for a rainy day. Maybe a future opening. I mean, it's got, it's got potential. So, who is the masterful individual who came up with that opening? Cause, huh, it had everything. It had kickin' music, awesome artwork, and a username you're not gonna forget anytime soon. At least if your phone number, or social security number, ends in eight four two eight, you won't. Well, that individual, that, that genius, is Joshua eight four two eight better known to the internet as the creator of the cult hit, Shadvik the Hedgehog. I'm sure you recognize this fellow, not just from that opening, but from all those, all those video games and comic books and fan fictions that exist. He has a whole fandom built around him. Now, some people have criticized Joshua and say, hey, wait a second, that looks familiar. I can't quite place it, but I've seen it before. Now, they might be referring to Silver the Hedgehog, okay, the knockoff that the company that makes Sonic did, all right, Sega stole this, you can clearly see Silver is a ripoff of Shadvik. That's pretty sad in this day and age where people have their art stolen from the internet by horrible corporations that seek to make money and get famous off it. That's pretty shallow on the part of Sega. I, I, I'm pretty disgusted that they would take a masterpiece like Shadvik and try to copy it with silver. 
If you put the two side by side, I, the, I can't even I can't even tell who's who. Left is he is he on the left? Is he on the right? Which one's Silver? Which one's Shadvik? That's how dedicated Sega was to ripping Joshua off. So as you can imagine, he's probably upset about it. Not that he's got around to talking about it just yet, but I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will, because he has a whole ton of ways to talk to his fans. All of them. Every single one of them. He's got you covered. If you're on Twitter, guess what? Boom. He's on Twitter. Facebook more your style? Boom. There's a Facebook. Do you want to talk to the character Shadvik itself? Are you in luck? Boom. Tumblr. Not only is that a Shadvik Tumblr account, Shadvik operates it. Not Joshua. Shadvik himself. Come on. Come on. That is that is compelling. Or wait, was the was the word I was looking for autistic? You know what? It might have been autistic. Autistic might be the word I'm thinking of when you create a Tumblr for your fan fiction character and completely answer every question asked it in character yourself. Yep, I'm pretty sure that is the definition of autism, or at least somewhere on the spectrum that is autism. With that that definition would be in there. I'm pretty sure the DSM, pretty sure it's got that included somewhere. That if you impersonate a cartoon hedgehog, you're probably fucking crazy. On some level. Maybe not wear your prom date skin crazy, but uh, autistic crazy, maybe, somewhere, a little less than that. Now Joshua likes to do commentary videos. Who doesn't? I mean, that's not a fad that should die, right guys? It's good stuff. And he likes to be hip. He's on top of it. And it's not a surprise. I mean, when you look at his subscriptions on YouTube, you automatically can see he's an individual of taste, refined taste. I mean, when I want the, the next best thing in comedy, I go to Fred and the Annoying Orange too. Just throwing that out there. If I want hard-hitting political commentary, hello Shane Dawson. Now, why he would have Retsu Prey in there, I can't really, I can't really say, all right? When I want real comedy, I'm not going to uh, S.A. Goons. I'm going to a partner channel where the real funny is found. Right? Where people with actual talent hang out. Okay? But such is life. Everybody has unique tastes and interests, and I can't really fault him for that. Now, as we've seen, Joshua is a man of many talents. He's a renaissance man, if you will. Uh, he does Shadvik, so he's obviously artistically talented. He does uh, YouTube commentaries, and not just the old-fashioned kind that Grandpa likes. No, he does those hip new ones, those one-shot commentaries. You know the kind I'm talking about, where they take a five-second clip from somebody's video, overlay their own commentary that's maybe 10 seconds long, and then bookend it with 20-second introduction and 45-second ending to create a video that, who wouldn't want to watch that? You know, favorite, rate, subscribe, tweet it, Facebook it, get it out there, Instagram it. That's the stuff kids like now. And he's right on top of it. He's got his fingers on the pulse of cool. And the Pulse of Cool saying one-shot commentaries. Now, when you look through his various social media sites and his YouTube page, you can obviously see he's a brony. Multiple, multiple pictures of fucking unicorns. What I, yeah, that's what they are. Unicorns, Pegasus, I don't know. Uh, he's also a furry, as evidenced by the fact that he represents himself as a anthropomorphic hedgehog. Now, I don't want you to be prejudiced, okay? You may be thinking to yourself, I bet I know what this guy looks like. You tell me those things, those characteristics about him, I've got a mental image of what this guy looks like. And if you're like me, you're thinking the same thing. Six feet tall, 180 pounds of pure muscle, chiseled abdomen, uh, a jawline you could cut glass with, long flowing dark hair. He's probably got a biceps that make Hulk Hogan jealous. All right, those, those pythons or the Hulksters can't handle the hotness that Joshua's slinging. Oh, you're in luck. I happen to find a video of him. So let's take a look. Let's see what this uh, this incredibly talented and handsome individual looks like. Hello, this is Joshua E428. And this is me. That's right. This is what I look like. Surprised. I don't know if surprise is the word I would use to describe my reaction to this video. Um, it definitely is not what I expected. Or I should say it's exactly what I expected. It is exactly what I expected. You are exactly what I was anticipating. And I'm sure everybody who's ever watched a video of yours or read one of your fucking horrible uh, impersonation answers on Tumblr or whatever else you fucking do 
This is what we would expect you to look like, Joshua, and you look just like it. No wonder you want to be a hedgehog. I would want to be a fucking turtle if I looked like you. A dump truck. I don't, you know, any, pick any fucking object, animate or inanimate, would be better than looking like that. Joshua, you look like a post-op transsexual who didn't take enough hormones. You know, maybe, maybe if I understood him better, maybe if I, if I tried to be more like him, uh, there wouldn't be this gulf between us. Maybe, maybe what I see in him as being autism and furrydom and uh, bronydom isn't really that. Maybe I just need to walk a mile in his shoes. Well, I can do that. I can create my own character and even create a fanfic for it. So I'd like to uh, test this out for everybody. Introducing Shadvik the Shithog, Adventures in Porta Potties. It's a little story I wrote. It's a quick one, a minute long. See if you like it. Jim and Shadvik the Shithog decided to go down to the World's Fair. Being 1920 and the only anthropomorphic hedgehog in the world, it was quite the awe-inspiring thing for the people standing around. Shadvik lovingly grabbed Jim's hand as they continued to walk down the pathway, observing all the different sights to be seen and taking in all the people as they were. Suddenly, out of the corner of his eye, Shadvik saw the thing that he loved most. Its blue, glistening color contrasted well against the different displays and demonstrations that were taking place. The odor that filled the air reminded Shadvik of home. Jim, of course, was made aware of this as well. The slight pressure in Shadvik's hand had changed. There was a urgency now, a necessity, to move to a different area. Jim, knowing his lover well enough, he knew that only one thing could draw Shadvik like this. A porta potty Shadvik ran, gaily, strolling past all the people, as they oohed and awed at the brown and blue-colored hedgehog. Jim walking slowly behind, smiled to himself, so glad that he knew him. Once at his destination, Shadvik looked longingly at the only open porta potty available and the long line of patrons waiting to use it. Slyly, he walked past them. Being short in stature, no one noticed him. He dived headfirst into the trough of happiness, as he liked to call it. There was a rumbling. A man entered, his porcelain white pale skin sealing the only light that ever could reach the depths of his happiness. Shadvik opened his eyes and extended his tongue, raising his hands to the sky and waiting, waiting for that chocolate porridge to come to him. As if God had been listening, his prayers were answered as the manna from heaven came sludging down all over his cheeks and face. Jim simply applauded, applauded his love, Shadvik the Shithog. Yeah, you know what? Even even after creating the masterpiece that is Shadvik the Shithog, I, uh, I don't feel like putting on a fursuit and getting mounted anally by somebody dressed as a fox, uh, nor do I want to make recolors or watch My Little Pony. It's weird. I guess I was wrong. And Joshua is pretty much what he looks like. <laughs> and if you've seen what he looks like, that about sums it up. And so there you have it. Like I said, this was merely a proof of concept video. Could you take random things, put them together, and find somebody that fit the bill? I think Joshua fits the bill pretty well, based on pretty much everything I've seen. He, he seems to fulfill the criteria for autistic brony and furry uh, pretty well, pretty nicely. Sums that up pretty well. And so there you have it. It's a proof of concept video. It's rough, but it's just meant to give you a general idea of how this would work. And for it to work, you need to list off uh, criteria. Uh, I know there aren't a lot of comments on these videos. I don't expect there to be. It would be a narrow list. But leave an idea of what you'd like. Uh, I take the top three of those and then go with it. Whether that's atheist, religious, fat, skinny, psycho, feminist, it doesn't matter. Uh, granted, the more unique or rare it is, the more interesting it would be, because it's a little harder to find. But that's kind of the general idea. It's supposed to be entertaining based on, can you find somebody that fits those criteria, and what the hell do they look like when you do find them?